So when, when we talk about what I look for with receivers, there's there's basically five main categories, and I kind of wrap everything into five main categories. And these are the things that as I watch through film, I kind of look at these things one at a time. So when I pop in a kid's film, I always watch a highlight first just to give me a, an initial feel of a player. Then I'll dive into if I can find game film, I'll, I'll try to find game film. But, you know, I'll look through it and I'll evaluate category one. Then I'll walk, we'll go through the film again, evaluate category two. Then I go through it, evaluate category three. And then that's how I come to my grades. And then that's how I come to my analysis. And the first thing I look at, and it's not an order of importance. It's just, it, this is how you build the foundation of an evaluation for me. This is what's always worked for me. The first thing I look for is sort of size, frame, strength. Just the, the uh, player's body. You look at his height. You look at his length. Length is very important for me. I, I would say length is more important for me than height. Uh, a, a receiver, I, that's going to get into the catch radius, which which we'll, which we'll discuss later. I look for strength and body from a frame standpoint. Can this player add weight? Is it is it important for him to add weight? Can he get away with his current size or not? Is he a guy that's going to grow too big? And that's a question with some wide receivers. Is he going to outgrow the position? Uh, does he have what kind of playing strength does he have? How does his strength manifest at the at, with his release? How is his strength as he's running his route? How is his strength as a blocker? How is his strength when it comes to yards after the catch? Next is speed. I think speed is the next part I look at. Speed is not an end-all be-all for me, as anyone that, that's followed me for over the years knows, but it is an important part of an evaluation. And speed is not just, you know, what is your 40 time, but it's practical speed, playing speed. So it begins with the burst off the line, how quickly a player gets to full speed. You know, a guy like Will Fuller is going to be a little different than some other receivers because Will Fuller is a guy that I thought took a couple steps to get to full speed, but then he had that great second gear, that great acceleration, which is the other part of speed. You know, how does speed manifest? Can you be fast? Can you only be fast on vertical routes or can you be fast on crossers, drags? Can you be fast out of routes, which I'll get into later? So speed is a part of, of how a player plays the game. Athleticism is the next part. Speed and athleticism for me, I, I break up because you can be very athletic and not fast. You can also be very fast and not necessarily overly athletic when it comes to how you play wide receiver. Athleticism for me is explosiveness, how it manifests itself out of its stance, out of breaks, with the ball in your hands. Are you sudden or are you smooth? I look at foot quickness and agility. I look at hips. Are, do you have tight hips? Do you have fluid hips, loose hips? Are you a flexible player athlete? That matters. That's going to manifest itself when it comes to route running. And then what kind of balance do you have? You know, foot balance, agility, those two things aren't necessarily the same thing. It has to do with, you know, your ability to, to take contact. It has to do with your ability to make cuts without kind of getting out of, you, you know, sometimes guys make cuts and they, they kind of lose balance or their body isn't really, uh, you know, maybe they have tight ankles. That can be part of a thing that balances, you know, can affect balance as well. But that's something I look for. That's important from route running, but also even more important with the ball in your hands. Then I dive into specifics of route running. Now, for me, I don't necessarily care if a high school prospect is a good route runner. It may affect his grade because you, you evaluate where he is as a route runner. But to me, I, I always had the stance when I was a receivers coach that I, I care more about do you have the physical tools to be a route runner? Because I get paid to teach you how to run routes. And as long as you have the physical tools and the traits that I look for, then then that's what I cared more about. And, and I feel the same way as an evaluator. I think what it can impact is that it can impact maybe how quickly you get on the field at some places. So here's what I look for from, from route running. Number one, I look for the traits above. I look for the athletics traits that I talked about. Speed, uh, explosiveness, foot quickness, agility, balance, fluidity, hip fluidity, those type of things. Specifically, how it manifests. How does it manifest in your stance and start? How how athletically, how is your stance and start? And then technically, how is your stance and start? Do you understand proper stem? A stem essentially is how you attack a defensive back. So how I always taught receiver play is you want to attack the leverage of the defender and you want to press for his outside shoulder. So it, it the what that does is so if if a corner's playing outside of me and I just run vertically. He's playing outside of me for a reason. He's defending a part of the zone that he doesn't want me to go to. So I would teach my receivers to attack that leverage. So if he's outside, I'm going to attack him outside. 
I taught pushing for the outside shoulder because what I had found and what you know I'd learned from some some of the top receiver coaches. I learned this from guys at Bowling Green when Urban Meyer's staff was there. This is something I learned when listening and learning from Curtis Johnson, who I think is the best wide receiver coach in the business. He was in Miami back in the Santana Moss Reggie Wayne days. He's now the wide receivers coach for the New Orleans Saints. But he, to me, it's it's if you attack that outside shoulder, you're threatening him more, and you're there's a more likelihood that you're going to be able to manipulate him. If a guy's playing inside of you and you attack that outside shoulder, there's a good chance you can get him to freeze. And then you're threatening the zone he's coming to. Because when a corner is defending a certain part of the field and you threaten him on that part of the field, then he's going to he's gonna overcompensate or react to that. And if he doesn't, then you're going to beat him. So those, do you understand that? Do you understand leverage? And again, you don't have to do that to be a, eventually become a good route runner. But if, I, if you do, then you're a guy that I project as someone who could probably play early. It'll affect your grade and ranking more than it'll affect my overall thought of you as a prospect. Quickness out of breaks. This is where hips and balance and, and foot agility and those type of things, flexibility come into play. Some guys are really choppy out of breaks because they don't have – they have tight hips. I look for – one of the things I taught from receivers is your your hips are your breaks, not your feet. And when you see receivers that are kind of get real choppy and their arms get out wide, that's because they're trying to use their feet to stop. And really, it's your hips. You talk about driving your hips into the ground. That's how you eliminate some of the extra choppiness for a route runner. So I look for that from a technical standpoint. But then also you factor in the athletic part. Do you have tight hips? Are you a player that doesn't have a lot of flexibility in your ankles? If you have tight ankles and you have tight hips, you're going to be real choppy as a route runner, and that's going, to that's going to impact your projection to the next level, no matter how big and strong you are. So those are things that I look for. Angles out of breaks. Does a player understand, Take does he understand when to go high, when to break a route off? Does he understand if you're going to bend a, a speed cut? Look, a speed cut is a one cut. It's naturally going to be rounded, but does he understand the, the need to work back downhill? Those are things I look for. Acceleration out of breaks. Some guys, it takes a few steps out of a break to be fast. Some guys aren't really fast players, but they make that break and they're gone and they are able to get out of their break fast. So, you know, I want a guy that's a four five all the time as opposed to a guy that's four three sometimes and four six at other times. Then I look at uh, separation just from a physical standpoint and then from a technical standpoint. So, if a player gets good separation, does that project to the next level? If he doesn't get good separation, what are the reasons for it? Is it an athletic problem? Is it a is it a technical problem? Are there things that can be approved upon that allow him to be that? Or is he a guy that's just not going to get good separation? And then you have to ask yourself, does he have other traits that can overcome his lack of getting good separation? Uh, finding soft spots in the zones, things like that. Ball skills are the next thing that I look for. The catch radius is important. I want a guy with really long arms. Even if he's 5'10", if you give me a receiver that's 5'10 with really long arms, I'm going to like him as a quarterback. And of course, if you're six two plus and you have really long arms, then that's the ideal. Hands, and that's just overall. Does he have strong hands? Does he fight the ball? Is he a natural pass catcher? Does he catch a lot with his body or away from his body? Uh, hand speed. You know, when he snap attacks the ball, does he kind of stick it out there? Does he snap the ball out there? Uh, snap his hands out there. Timing as a pass catcher. That's important. You know, I want receivers that understand it to be able to, to kind of the ball's coming. I'm going to get my hands out quickly and catch it. Timing is a leaper is important as to me timing as a leaper is even more important than how quickly you get up there timing refers to do you know how to time your jump but then also can you do it quickly or do you need are you someone that needs to kind of gather and jump like a long a, a, a high jumper that's not what i want as a receiver i want a guy that can get off the ground right now with perfect timing and snatch the ball out of the air as opposed to a guy that can jump 42 inches at a combine but doesn't know how to use that on the football field Focus in traffic. You know, are you a guy that's going to be bothered by people around you? I don't care if you can do it at a seven on seven. I care about can you do it on film when people can hit you. Toughness is part of that too. And then tracking the deep ball. I want to see a guy accelerate through the look back. So a lot of receivers, when they're running a route and they look back for the ball, they slow down. I want a guy that that when he looks back, either maintains or, or you know, maintains that speed. And that, the way I taught it was I taught, taught my receivers to accelerate through the look back. They never did. But if you get that in their head, then when they look back, they're going to maintain that speed. And that's how you can keep separation on, on deep balls. And then can you track the deep ball? Some guys kind of slow down. They can't really play to the ball. That's one area where I thought Will Fuller was exceptional, is he could not only was he fast, but he tracked the deep ball extremely well. 
And then intangibles like production, positional flexibility. Are you just a W or are you a W, X, and Z? Are you just a Z and an X? Uh, can you play defense? Can you play running back? Those are all things that are going to factor into my analysis and ranking of a prospect. Uh, injury history, effort, and clutch play. Are you someone that plays your best in big games? And that's one of the things I loved about Javon McKinley in high school. So when I evaluate a wide receiver and when you want to know why I like a wide receiver, he's most likely going to grade out in a lot of those categories. And those are the things that I look for in a wide out.